Hi everyone and welcome to this new Substance Designer 5 tutorial. So we are in the fourth part of um, the procedural eye tutorial made with the Substance Designer 5. So in case you haven't seen the previous videos, I invite you to click on the link that should have appear on the link on the screen right now. Uh, so basically what we have done in uh, the previous video, I'm going to put something like this, it's better. What we have done is basically um, focusing on the sclera, which is the white part with the with the blood here, blood veins. We have made uh, the iris, the ear here, the, the coloring and the different patterns inside. And today what we are going to do is to tweak again a bit the iris, not too much. And more important, we are going to animate anim make the pupil a bit more realistic and to to animate it and when I say animate it is not just changing the diameter but making sure that the iris is mo moving is following uh, the the pupil so it, it, it's moving uh, accordingly so let's start so before to start I just made few changes uh, in the graph to make some cleaning basically I uh, changed the way the other white was blending here making sure that all what is concerning the iris it is here and then once I'm satisfied I have this this part this is the part that I will blend with the background and so it's just to make more sense so a few stuff that I've changed also here is uh, I tweaked a bit the um, use saturation and lightness to make it a bit uh, before it was like that so it was way too bright I changed it, that here and I changed also a few stuff here I changed the blending to overlay uh, so it blends better it's not 100% necessary the copy as you can see is too strong but you can play also with the opacity which may give something a bit more realistic so let's do it with opacity once again there is every eyes are different so it's really up to you to, to tweak that another thing that I will do is uh, right now if you compare to a real eye like this one um, you can notice that first let me check that um, I, I want to add a bit more more noise first and more uh, more grain as well. a bit of a bit of noise and uh, a bit of blur so that's what we're going to do now so in order to do that I'm going to go here and that's what we're going to blur uh, to, to blur a bit not too much but just a little so let's put blur modifier here course it's way too high so we need to put something really subtle so zero is like that Oops, zero is like that so just like that so give blends better so zero, 0 0.4 it seems to be good just enough so it's not too realistic I'm going to change the color of this as well because I don't like or something a bit more greenish maybe Ooh. maybe saturate a bit to give something that I like uh, <coughs> sorry we are going to tweak later a bit uh, the value again but so far I'm going to stop there and what I want to do is to add a noise as well to all of this so it's more realistic as well so uh, I'm going to use a noise here so I think the black and white spot here should do the job let me check yeah uh, what I'm going to do is to couple this with a gradient hmm okay so, and now I'm going to pick some color in, in this eye maybe this one so I'm going just to pick, I'm going to find an interesting one. Let me check that. This one is too bright. Okay. I'm going to take 
this one like some values here with the gradient so I go here gradient editor I pick gradient and I will go on my image just to pick different value just for to get something interesting okay I'm going to do it again because I don't like too much like something here maybe okay that's it's more than enough maybe something more bluish okay here I, I took another one okay that should be more than enough don't worry about the green we don't care from now it's really we prefer more than not enough okay so once I have that I'm going here and we're going to add to blend them together okay so of course here it could be cool for a cat maybe or an alien but that's not that what we want of course what we want is to we want to decrease the opacity a lot. If we uh, maybe I will check in overlay how it goes. I think even copy is better. okay so I added a bit of noise just enough what I want to do is that I want to put this noise as well into the um, into the normal map so let's do it so what I'm going to do first is uh, you know what even the noise I want it to be Let me check. You know what? I'm going to try something. Rescale. I'm going to pick a gradient again. Hmm, interesting. You know, I would have thought. Oh, yes, it's normal. Because I have that here. And I'm going to convert it. But no, not that. Gradient map okay so now okay so this way I have a gradient but which is doesn't affect the color so I can push it a bit more okay so here we have something interesting <coughs> what I'm going to do is to move the blur here so basically I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to make sure that this is going here and this is going here perfect so everything is affected the blur affects everything even the noise so we get something that I think is interesting right now what I may want to do is to change a bit the radius of, of this part because it's a bit too big in my opinion so it's not this one it's this one I'm going to push a bit the radius something like that ok and maybe a bit the scale as well so it doesn't go too much inside ok okay so this is cool now what I want to make sure is that we affect the normal map as well once again I've seen I said it in the previous video here I put the specular inside in the this part of the eyes because um, in substance designer it doesn't really handle uh, well the, um, the opacity uh, but in, re in real condition I would have put two layers and one which would go above the eyes which would take most of the specular but here I put it this way so we really see what we are doing so what I'm going to do right now is to 
duplicate the blur. Right. Delete that. And, 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 and we are going to make sure that this is taken in account that. Not really. So what we are going to do is to put that here. The blur will be here. We are going to blend this and this. This, this, and we will duplicate this. Oops, no. Control, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. No. No shift here. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so of course it's way too much, but at least we are sure that the blend is just inside. So, let's see. We blur it a bit. And finally we move that here. Okay, so as you can see it's a bit too much. Mm. Actually, I'm going to take this one. Okay, way better. So, still too much. So, I'm going to put it to. And I don't know if you know, actually. 0 0.2 should be fine, but as you see, there is. It affects also the middle, so we don't want that. So, what we're going to do is here to subtract. So let's create a blend again. At this point and we put the eyes here and what we are going to put is subtract. Okay perfect so you see that this is not right now this is not affecting. Okay perfect so what we are going to do now is to tweak a bit the shape of the pupil to be a bit more realistic as you can see it's not that round so what you can do for that this I'm going to collapse it so first you create a blur and of course it's too much so let's reduce it to something like that let me check if I do more to give something pretty interesting but just to make sure what I will add is a slope slope blur <coughs> so slope blur grayscale this way and I'm going to add a cloud a cloud one should be enough I guess let's, let's check that so of course way too strong so first you put your sample to the maximum to have more definition and you reduce this to something extremely slow 0 0.01 ok so it gives a bit of variety and we are going to reduce a bit the intensity of the blur to something like that so if we compare to a reference for example we see that Right now we have something which is way more inter interesting. So right now, <coughs> the funny part, we are going to animate the pupil. So what we want to change here, first we are going to go to the shape and what we are going to change is the size. So we are going to expose it and we are going to call it pupil dilatation like this. Okay, and now what we want to affect is the the things inside the pupil. So first, what we're going to do is to define a min minimum and maximum for the pupil. So let's say we want the pupil to be minimum, uh, yeah, 
zero point one maybe and maximum something like this should be fine zero zero point four and default zero point sixteen okay okay so now that we have that what we're going to change is this the splatter circular and uh, this, these two splatter circular actually this one will be a bit different so let's start by this one so what you go you go inside and I don't know if you remember but we make sure that the pattern pivot is set to max what it does is we are sure that the outer part is not moving really when we scale it down it would be from the center to to the, the exterior so let's go inside so what I'm going to do here is to play with the pattern scale if I'm not wrong yeah exactly that's what we want to move so let's go inside let's say okay empty function so now it's broken and what we're going to do is to create a float which will be set to 1 so to the maximum we are going to use a get float here where we take back the pupil dilatation and we are going to do a subtraction mm. Like that, and it will be uh, our output knob. So the thing is, if we look right now, if we animate it, we see that we have to push a bit the value to play with the value because the iris is almost not moving so that's what we are going to do so what we are going to do is to multiply this by a value that we are going to define so in order to do that what we are going to do sorry I go back here is to push temporarily this value to 0 0.4 0 0.3 which will be fine we go back here and so we create a float we create a multiply and we are going to play so oops I have to if I don't connect it okay so let's see 10 is too much I tell you but it's just to play so right now what we want to do is to oops you know it's way too much Something like that should be fine. So let's say 2.9. Okay. So now, if we go back here, let's see how it goes. If I play with this value, we see that this is moving perfectly according to what we want. Except at the end, where well, it may go too strong. Yeah, it goes too strong, so what we're going to do is to go to the minimum this time and play again with the value. What we're going to do is going to maybe put a bit this number. Okay, so. Zero, okay, perfect. So we are going to go to zero point six, and here let's see how it goes. Let's go back to the maximum. Mm. So if I put to zero, okay like that once again 0 0.3 I go back here and this I will reduce this number to get what I want okay so should be fine let's try again we go back 
to our pupilization and now it works so you see for each value it gives something that is consistent so you could play a lot with these values to take whatever you want so I put that back to 0 0.5 Okay, so this works. Uh, for this one, um, the thing is it's so straight that we can't really see it. So what we are going to do is to play a bit, not the, not with the warp, because it's a bit too sensible, I guess. Actually, let me see. No, because we can have really weird values. So what we are going to do is to play a bit with the disorder. So you see it moves just a bit like that, so just to know that something is happening. So the default value is let's put to 50, for example. And once again we are going to use an empty function. We are going to go inside. So first let's put a value to 50 like this. And we are going to get float, and get float, we take back the pupil rotation, we are going to multiply it, so, because, let's multiply it by 10 for example, um, so new float, like that, let's put 20 just to see. Okay, and we are going to add this to 50. And this will be our, re our result set as output node. So let's see. Now, if we move the eyes, yeah, you see. Hmm, let me check, does it move? Oops, no, not that, like that, like this, yeah, you see that it moves, I can make it more because as you see, as we remove it doesn't move too much on the border, so I'm going to exaggerate that, of by 100 just to check it should be more interesting okay now we can see it moving clearly so it's way more interesting okay so I'm going to put back the value to 0 0.16 and that would be it for this video, so I hope it has been interesting. Um, in the last video what we will do is just to see how we can play uh, with the color to change them uh, uh, not exactly randomly but to put some variation, some controlled variation so you can choose the color of the eyes. It won't be, as I say once again, it won't be like perfect compared to real eyes. You, I, I, I don't pretend you will be able to do exactly all the eyes you want, but after you can still play with it and uh, add, add some more de interesting details. So I hope uh, you have liked this video. If it's the case, don't uh, hesitate to reach it or to put uh, something in the comment. Thanks again and have a great day.